And we are now going live in Facebook land. Welcome, everyone. And it's being recorded as well. For those of you that are watching this later, can't be here right now. Welcome to our weekly power hour. I'm very excited to be the host of today's session and welcoming Sharon Francisco. Thank you again for being my guest and guest panelist today. Thank you for inviting me, Deb. It's always fun. My, my pleasure. We are, 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 I love this uh, topic, how to handle tricky client conversations. And this, we're, we're saying client, it could be prospects, uh, basically anyone that you might be in business with or do business with. Um, we're going to be talking about that today. And I've got personally lots of examples of tricky conversations I've had with clients over the years. And Sharon will have a lot of tips as well. Um, I want to encourage you to the people that are here today uh, to show your video and put up your hand. Let's have a conversation. We want to help you. So some, you may actually have a, a situation that you find yourself in at the moment uh, where you've got a tricky, you need to have a tricky conversation with the client. Well, here's your opportunity to get first-hand, one-on-one -on -one bit of mentoring and coaching to help you through that. So unmute yourself. Let's have a conversation with, with the, all of us today. And also, if you're in Facebook land, um, post your questions uh, in the Facebook Live where we are right now, um, and we will address those as well. Lou will let me know if there's any questions over there in Facebook land. Thank you. So tricky conversations. Who's had them or who's having them or who needs to have them? Just any one of those, uh, uh, all of the above, just <laughs> pop up your hand. Um, welcome. <laughs> yes, Sharon has. Yeah, Jackie, Karen, I'm sure you've had uh, some tricky conversations. Um, you're the two that we have. I'm going to put you in the hot seat right now. Is there anything, do you want to give an example of a tricky conversation you have had with a client and how you've managed that? Or maybe you're in a situation at the moment where you're just not sure how to handle it. So Jackie, I'm going to put you in the hot seat first. I currently have a client I've worked for for just under 10 years and he's the sort of person that does everything at the last minute and turns everything into an extremely stressful environment and he loses the plot. Oh. Not just with me, but he just loses the plot in general sort of thing. And it doesn't matter how much I try and put in place to start the processes earlier, he always finds ways to delay it and then blame me if it's not done on time. Um, but he also has that same problem with his own staff. He'll lose his shit with his staff, and there are days that I think all the staff feel like packing up and just walking out the door. Oh, wow. So he's a, one of these roller coaster type people that goes up and down all the time. Oh, bless. Yes, and so you've had conversations with him in the past, have you? When, he, when he's up. I've had conversations with him in the past when he's up here and I've had conversations with him in the past when he's down here. Most of the time when he's down here, it's just listening to what he's got to say. Yeah. And then waiting till he's actually got through what he wants to be able to then direct him back to, well, let's put a plan in place and let's do the 10 or 12 things that we need to do. And how how is he when when you're able to reason with him, because it's, I think it, it sounds like he, when you say he loses the plot, he gets really angry. Oh, quite angry. Yeah. And yelling and very, and loud. very loud and carry on and all of that. And so when he's, when the, the issue is dealt with and you're then able to rationalize because you're trying to rationalize with an angry person is like rationalizing with a drunk person. You just, <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, so have you, how is he when you rationalise with him when he's, when the, when the, all the drama's over? Once he feels like he's got himself back into control, he's actually quite a reasonable person to deal with. Mm. Um, and I must say in the last 18 months, he's gotten a lot worse. 
Oh. Because he's got, he feels like he doesn't have control because, you know, everybody's working remotely and he can't see them, he can't control them, I suppose, is the word that I would say. So he gets quite angry at a drop of a hat Mm. over something simple and small because he can't do it then and there. Mm. So and does he, is, when, when you've had those conversations with him, does he feel or sound remorseful or? Oh, no, he's, he's not the sort of person to apologise. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Um, I only know when everything's okay is because we're back to normal conversations, but he will never apologise. I think I've had him apologise twice in the 10 years that I've worked for him. Mm. And how do, you, how do you feel about it then? Because... I mean, one of the things that I think is really important is that we all are able to make choices. Um, So my choice is, and he's been told, I'm finishing off the 2021 accounts and he has to find himself a new bookkeeper. Oh, okay. Because I told him six months ago when he lost the plot, there aren't many bookkeepers out there that can do the work that he's got. He's got multiple entities that do multiple different things and they interact with each other in different ways. That's quite complex. And it's, when I first started working for him, he only had two entities. He now has eight. Yeah. And because he can't control the eight in his own head, it makes it very difficult. Mm. So I think. So yeah. I had. I warned him six months ago that if it didn't change, that I would finish, and I would finish the year out because I believe finishing the year out and then. It's his responsibility mm. after that. And has he? You've told him that, so that's. Yep. And how did how did you take that bit of news? Oh, not very well. Uh, yeah. I got told I mean, by the staff after he got off the phone to me that he lost it. Yeah. In the next hour and a half. Yeah. So um, that that is what I would consider, uh, and not the not the only extreme case because it it happens. Uh, unfortunately, too frequently. But that is an extreme case. And I think, I mean, you don't even know what mental health issues there could be involved. Um, And sometimes, yeah, you get to the point where you, you can't help them anymore. And you it's, you've got to do what's right for you. You know, that should be a consideration anyway. Look, he's taken on too much, but he won't admit it. That's what that's his problem. We've told him, the staff have told him he's got too much on his plate, but he won't listen. Mm. And that's, he's created his own. And I think the only way he's going to find out is once I've left, I think quite a couple of the staff members are leaving and they're his long-term staff members, not ones that have started in the last two years. Some of his staff members have been working for him for 10 years are looking at other jobs and moving on. Mm. He will, um, if he doesn't, uh, you know, if he hasn't learned the lesson from this, then he'll learn it in the coming months by the sounds of it. Hopefully. But, yeah, he can be quite charming and then he can turn around and be quite mm. off planet. And How I dignified think are you? Sorry. No, I was just no, you say, go, go, dignified. go, sure. Mm. How dignified are you with going through that process of of taking him up to the end of um, the financial year and giving him that opportunity and quietly stepping away and preserving your own well-being around that? I just think that's such such an important thing to do. That's taken me 12 months to make that decision, though, because I probably should have done it last year. Sort of thing when he started to get really bad. Um, Probably December is when I really decided that I was going to finish the year and that is it. Um, And I was hoping to finish it a bit earlier, but because we've been in lockdown, I haven't been able to sit down and have a face-to-face meeting with him to do the last part. Mm. But um, he's agreed now to do it via Zoom. So tomorrow it is. So you've actually, it's it's about to happen, is it? Like you've now finished year end? Well, Tomorrow I'm having the final discussion with him. Whether he agrees again or not is a different question. Mm. And even handling, the thought of handling that conversation, have you, one of the things that we talk about uh, or strategies is to prepare 
yourself when you know in advance? Sometimes you don't know in advance, but have you prepared for the conversation tomorrow, Jackie? Oh, I've got half a dozen notes I've written down, but I probably won't have them on me when I talk to him because a lot of my conversations have always been about his his mental state, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, but I've got my six points about the fact that this doesn't work for me anymore. Mm. Obviously, the relationship that he and I have don't work anymore. Mm. Um, I know that leading up to it for the first few hours, I'm going to be quite nervous and stressed. Mm. But I also know that once the conversation's finished and it's done and dusted, I will feel better. <laughs> but it's that couple of hours and probably a bit of today where it's, I know that we're having that conversation to finalise things tomorrow is quite stressful. Yeah, uh, 100%, very stressful. But you, I you're... I just remind myself that tomorrow it's the end. That, that is, that is the end. I think you've been very, as, as Sharon said, you know, gracious and professional, extremely yeah. professional with the handling of him and the situation and the fact that you're even going to have a conversation with him, you know, kudos to you, not just putting it in an email. He's my six points. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that we're, we're going to be all with you in spirit and uh, to encourage you and give you courage. Uh, and, and there's no turning back from this. No. Mm. And financially, is that a consideration for you, or was that a consideration when the reason why we were waiting? It was Sorry. partly while I was waiting six months to find new clients to replace him. Okay, yeah, nice. It wasn't. I was just going to let him go and then have nothing. I needed to have something to replace him with. Yeah. Yes, and and that is actually a good point. I think if you're kind of talking about the. Um, uh, oh, just looking over here at my chat boxes on on from Facebook, and Scott has said Jackie's client sounds like a maniac. Yes, um, and really, there's some people that you just have to walk away from. So I think though that uh, you do you're doing it professionally, and I think we've we've started off with a bang. I think with this client, <laughs> I wasn't quite expecting. Uh, an example of uh, of that extreme, but I think that's the way it can be. Um, certainly, I've walked away from clients, and I'm, I've mentored clients. Sharon, you would have mentored clients as well, where we say prepare for it. You know, put a date on it. What date are you going to finish work for this client, and then do the work that you need to, to your marketing to fill your books, to fill, to replace that income. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it's a, so it's a, a scary thing. Karen, have you had uh, uh, an example that you'd like to share or a situation that you might currently be in? Um, I've had many. Yeah. <laughs> As all of us have. I've just had one yesterday, actually, but um, I'm really proud of where I'm at with, understanding my value that I bring to businesses. Part of that is the lady sitting next to me on the screen. <laughs> it's work with me earlier in the year. And it's just being determined, no, I bring value to, to any client that comes with this. So I had a situation yesterday, it was of my doing. And so it was a really good learning gem for me. Um, I'm really pushing um, zero training because I am very passionate about training mm -hmm. and it's going great guns, which is great. A lady contacted me and I was referred by, to, um, by somebody and I had a spot yesterday to spend a couple of hours. She paid for a couple of hours. Well, yes, she said, no, the quote's fine. Um, and I said, because, and I normally ask for payment up front. And for her, because it was a bit of a rush, I overlooked it. And that's mm -hmm. my fault, and I shouldn't have done it, and I won't do it again. Anyway, so I, I got there, and again, it was my fault. She had just got zero, she was doing everything manually. She wanted setups, whatever. So one hour was setups, 
So that was wrong for a start. And then she got frustrated after the hour and got very frustrated. And I get that because people get frustrated with training anyway. So you just could have calm the, the whole vibe of the room. And I said, you will, you'll be comfortable by the time I finish. I could have happened all the time. In my head, I'm thinking I should have never done setups with her, but anyway, that's mm. what it was. So we finished the session and I and I could see quite quickly she was never going to engage me as a bookkeeper. She wanted to do it all herself because it's easy, isn't it? We do it yes. ourselves. Yes. So yeah. I then changed the conversation and I thought, I'm only going to show her the basics as I put in my quote. And the quote was very basic because I didn't plan on doing the, the setup. Anyway, so I left and then I thought, Payment. I haven't done anything about payment. So I messaged her last night because she had a query about something. I got back to her about the query and said, oh, about the payment. She said, I'll pay it now. This morning, there's still nothing in my bank account. So that's my doing. However, she emailed me and she said, you said that you offer written notes after the training, which I do. And if it's a Zoom, I'll actually record it. And... Knowing my value and knowing my worth, I just stood up straight and type, responded back and said, I don't release, I won't release those notes until I'm paid. So when the money reaches my bank account, then I'll, I'll get those notes. And I can't say that my heart wasn't racing, but I thought, no, mm. well, I spent two hours with this woman yesterday and some of it couldn't be done because she had a trial. Um, subscription so we couldn't attach it to the ATO or anything or payroll or anything like that but it's just understanding that they need to understand that you you know your stuff and you mean business and these are my terms and conditions yes I marked up that's my fault for not doing it as I normally do it but no I'm not releasing anything until you pay me and that would happen with anything any professional that you dealt with so I was really proud of myself this morning but I um that's just through dealing with rubbish before and putting up with rubbish from people and not having the difficult conversation so that wasn't easy saying to her no I'm not releasing the notes until you pay me mm -hmm. but it had to be done so it's just a growth thing for me really I've just been through so much rubbish with rubbish clients that's all been weeded out over probably the last 12 months. I've got a book, a book of people that I just love. I don't have anyone on my books that I don't love. Mm. Um, mm. But the conversation, like she's never going to get fine, like you can see that. But that conversation was difficult. But you've got to do it anyway. Mm. Interesting how um, there are so many triggers. There was like your, your gut, the oh, yeah. <laughs> thing was was going off like a firecracker really the, the, yeah. right through from the beginning of the process oh absolutely um you know it was a great learning experience for me um i probably came home and beat myself up for half an hour afterwards and went yeah. oh, i did you know i should have got payment up front it shouldn't have been set up so it should have been completely oh, you know separate to that but that was just a learning curve for me. I won't make that error again. But as we were having discussions about certain things and then she was starting to draw more out of me and then mm. she said, oh, so how do I do my bass? Um, and that was just kind of the start for me. There was a few other triggers as well, but you're right, Debbie, like I think once you've um, dealt with a few difficult situations that the red flags do pop up for you and as long as you're listening to those gut things but I was sort of kind of listening to my gut things going oh, in my head thinking oh why didn't I do this why didn't I do that but that's okay because I won't do it again but definitely listen to the red flags but there was no way I was releasing those notes to her this morning because mm -hmm. I will wait to see if the money hits my bank account first yeah yeah it's 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 one of, sorry I just um, there we go thank you Karen for sharing that um, one of the things that I'm passionate about is to try to help people avoid 
the mistakes that I made, the millions of mistakes that I made, including not having those, running away from conversations and things like that. But what I love about this forum is hearing <clears throat> other people, um, not, not about the mistakes, but just what you learn from them. Because even though, you know, we, 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 with our kids and what have you, we, we try to do everything so that they don't, don't make the same mistakes I made when I was growing up and all this sort of thing. And we're, we, I want to do that for you and each one of us wants to do it for other people that are listening in. But the reality is that, that these things just kind of sneak up on us in a way. But the quicker that you learn, and I think that's the key, when you are really switched on and, and discerning about and also selective about the clients, you understand your value, you're selective about the clients that you want to do your best work with, all of that, like it doesn't happen right at the start. It takes time, Sharon, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think you're right, Deb. I was just thinking as you were saying that, it's... I was thinking about when I was, I was building the business with Tanya and our different personalities and what the different reactions we have from the different personalities. And I know I'd start making my, like for me, I'd set up my day with a default diary and when I'd be making my calls and calls to accountants to book appointments to ask for referrals and to build our business. And I, I, I've mentioned this before. I'd look around for Kenya after my first few calls and she'd be gone. I'm like, where'd she go? And mm. she'd come back in and I'd say, where were you? She she couldn't even sit in the same room. Oh. <laughs> this thing to me make the calls. So what I realised, I mean, that's not just Tanya. What I realised was that the different personalities can manage different things and Bookkeepers on the whole, if we look at DISC, if you're familiar with DISC, mm. which is D-I-S-C, it's a personality profiling tool. If you look at DISC, mostly people that are drawn to numbers and, and detail are accountants and bookkeepers that like the cross the T's and dot the I's are usually the, the C's and S's. Now, if we think about the C's and S's, so DISC is D-I-S-C. C's and S's are, C's are analytical, reserved, precise, private, and systematic. S's are patient, even-tempered, and I was thinking this when Jackie was talking about mm. how she handled her client, even-tempered, even accommodating, tactful, and humble. So you mix those two personality traits, which mostly, on a whole, I mean, I get all my clients to do DISC profile. On a whole, I'd say 80-plus percent of bookkeepers and accountants would be Cs and Ss. Mm. So you're up against the people that sounds like this. Guy. As soon as, Jackie, you said that, I, I think there might be, Scott is right, he, I think your buddy might be, not buddy, but your, your ex-client soon to be, <laughs> might be a bit manic, but D personalities are direct, results orientated, firm, strong-willed and forceful. So by default, a lot of business owners who are successful, a lot of the times have got those characteristics because they push through. They're not like they grow their businesses. So they've got this kind of armour that they don't seem to care about what other people think of them, which all the power to them. And, you know, we're dealing with a lot of those sort of people. And eyes are outgoing, enthusiastic, optimistic, high-spirited and lively. And there's like obviously there's, there's um, a little bit of each of those personalities within, within all of us. So I think when we, when we think about a, a bookkeeper, they're so kind and gentle and having these sort of conversations with difficult clients, we're sometimes generally up against people that really have none of these beautiful, um, if, they're, if they're willing to push back like Jackie's client, they, they don't have much of that even-tempered tactfulness that, that most bookkeepers on a rule have got that, that there. The other thing I was going to say also was years ago, it would be 
nearly 20 years ago, I worked with a solicitor and I would get him to brief, um, look at my emails before I sent them out to, I coached business coaches and he was a solicitor for the business coaching firm. And I'd get him to look at someone because <laughs> there was a lot of legal stuff that went on in that um, <laughs> company. So I'd get him to look at my, my emails before I sent them out. And I'm the kind of person, I'm a high eye. So I, I'm a bit of a chatter. So in my emails, I would have a lot of story about, okay, so the reason with this was this, 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 and this, and I'd point out and bullet point and what have you. And he said the best outcome for tricky situations is to be as brief and to the point as possible. So again, when Jackie said six points, I'd probably look at even halving that, Jackie. And, and just having it like really to the point and, and not, not feel sorry about doing it. Don't feel like you I think we have to be so careful about how many times we say sorry when mm. we're, we say it so, and I'm guilty of it, of saying sorry when it's usually in tricky situations. It's not us, it's them. And, and pointing that out in a tactful way without taking the blame ourselves is really important. Mm. Oh, that's great advice, Sharon. That's awesome. Um, it, uh, and it, the very interesting thing, and, and you know, I, I know about the disc profile and I've done it and things like that, but you'd need to be reminded of it, I yeah. think, quite frequently. Um, and I think you, the other point that you made, and I think that people can take advantage of yeah, yeah. our goodwill and our, um, our kindness, and, and that's what I find in the industry as a whole, uh, that we want to help people. That's, you know, that's what we love. We feel rewarded when, yeah, things are tough and you've got to work through stuff, but you, you, you know you're being respected. I think that's, the, we, we need to feel respected. We need to feel valued. And, um, but we, we, want, we genuinely want to help. The problem that can happen, the extreme of that is that you end up, and I'm thinking of the, the doormat analogy, really, that you allow we, we allow people to walk over us because we don't feel comfortable at, ha at having those direct conversations that the other profilers um, would. And you're absolutely right about you think of entrepreneurs and and that by their very nature they're outgoing and they're prepared to take a risk. Bookkeepers typically are not risk takers. You know, we're, fa we're fairly conservative and we need evidence and, and we, we don't want to say something unless we can substantiate that and all this sort of thing. Whereas you get other people that go bum, 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 all, all over the place and we're freaking out. So yeah. I think the, uh, the, the, one of the critical things and something uh, that I implemented uh, once I learned about how the best way to deal with my personality and yet get what I wanted done with this client um, was to prepare for it. And as Jackie, what, what Jackie's saying, she got six points, six points. Sharon, I think it's a great idea. Cut that down. Start off with three. And if you really need to drive it home, go, go the whole hog. But I think preparation, that was something um, that I felt gave me put me kind of up with the upper hand, mm. whereas I, I otherwise I felt like I was unprepared and I go, oh, uh, uh, oh, I'm not sure, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, um, you know, and all of that, whereas I had a situation, I'll give you an example, where I had uh, a, a client that was actually angry with, um, not with me directly, but it was my staff, but then essentially it was coming back to me but this particular staff member was a high valued you know she was awesome and I knew for this I had that gut feeling about this guy right from the start and there were other things going on with him about relationships with females and things like that so it was it was there was a lot of ingrained historical stuff for him and he was dealing with a female which he wanted to make sure that I knew what my place was. That was, he was going to do that. Anyway, 
he was downright angry with me. And um, and I thought I was absolutely churning inside. But because I knew, and we actually organised a face-to-face meeting with an angry man. So oh. that was interesting. But I felt this was, I felt safe where I was. So that was the first thing. He, we were in a in a, an open office and uh, open as in, I took him to a private room with another staff member. So, but I felt very safe about the position that I had put myself in. And also doing some thinking and some preparation, I thought, I, I know that we actually haven't done anything wrong. He has completely blown up about something that in his mind, it's a huge thing, Jackie, a bit like your person. And anyway, he was on the other side of the table and he brought his two sons with him as well, just to add a bit more testosterone into that room. And I had my female staff member on the other side. Anyway, he was literally banging the table like that and yelling and banging and making his point. And I had a big notebook and I just was like this and I said okay I know I can see you're angry what I want to do is make sure that I completely understand what your issues are so I'm going to take notes is that okay oh yes yes that's okay so there I am he's yelling I'm I'm not even <laughs> I love it <laughs> I'm just and then when he did like that and then I then he'd stop. He'd take a breath, and I'd go, "Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> Are you done with your rant? I, I want to make sure. I want to deal with everything. I'm 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 writing notes, and one by one, I'm going to deal with all of the issues that to make sure you're being heard, and these issues are being addressed. Is there anything else? <laughs> writing writing all this sort of went on for ages anyway finally I think he must have been exhausted or something he uh, I asked him again I did I just kept asking that question is that is that everything I want to make sure i am captured everything don't leave anything out until he finally said yes that's everything and by then he's he had really I think exhausted himself but also it might have been because he felt he was being hurt. And then what I did, because I knew I had already spoken to the staff member, I knew what the issues were. That he was a bit like you, Jackie. You know, you know basically what they're going to say and what have you. And there wasn't one thing on that of the, all the points that he made that I wasn't able to answer rationally. Yeah, nice. And so I went, right, the first thing is you said this. Let me explain that, this, that. Next thing, you said this, let me, and then I'd get the maybe the bookkeeper to come in and speak as well and say, well, this is actually what happened or whatever it was. doesn't matter about the details. But by the end of the meeting, he actually stood up and shook my hand and said, thank you very much for your time. And I felt like I thought he was going to give me a hug. It was like it was a little That's bit freaky, but um, it, it You know, in terms of a strategy, if you ever find yourself in a situation, make sure you're safe and you feel physically um, that you're in a safe place, but write notes and tell the client that you're going to be taking notes. I can see you're upset, acknowledge how they're feeling uh, and say, I want to make sure that I deal with this. So I need to know whether I need to change something I'm doing or I want to explain to you why something has happened. So let me take notes. And you just keep doing that until they feel that everything, all their issues are being, have been heard and then you deal with them one by one. If you can't deal with the issue, so there might be something that you need to research go away, say, I'm going to actually find out about that. I need to speak to my staff member to see because I'm, I'm not aware of that happening. So, But you're giving them, making sure that they feel they're being heard. Yeah, so that. so that, that, was, uh, that was one of my examples. Helen, I can see you. Uh, that you can see you there. Mm-hmm. You're not hiding. How are you going?
Where are You're you? Muted. Can you unmute yourself? Where? Oh, the mouse is not working or something. Hang on. Let's see if I can do it for you. Ask to unmute. I'm not sure. Lou, can you? Uh, I tried, but I can't. Uh, while we're trying to figure that out, can I yes. um, contribute? Um, yeah, absolutely. I was thinking before when, when we were talking, a lot of this comes from, I think it's a, like as far as, you know, if we look at professional development or personal development skills that we're looking at building to, to help build our business. And I, I'm sort of working with my clients now with the, um, the October, November, December quarter. So this could be something that you look at for the next three months leading into Christmas. That I think a lot of these conversations sometimes, like what you just told us then, Deb, was displaying really a high level of confidence to sit down in front of somebody with a notepad, have the preparation and to, to stand equal with somebody that way that's banging the table takes a big lot of confidence to do that. Like the easy way is like, you know, I know Jackie saying before that she's going to meet with this person face-to-face -face or on Zoom, like that's just as good as face-to-face. -face. It's a lot easier to send an email, right, or, oh, yeah. or to, to hide, or, you know, even a phone call. So I think confidence plays a big part in, in having these tricky conversations. And if you can stand at a, like, level especially with a high D men, direct, results orientated, firm, strong-willed, forceful. High D men can be very intimidating and he certainly sounded like a high D man. Mm -hmm. And certainly for me, it's something that I don't find easy to do. But working, I think um, having a level of confidence helps you a lot more with that. And if you feel like your confidence mm -hmm. is waning or you're not as a high level confidence as what you want, it's a skill. It's just like any other skill. So it's putting yourself out there. It's reading the books. It's it's doing things that you're not used to doing. And once you start conquering things little by little, like if it's hiring a staff member or if it's, you know, standing up in front of people on stage, if it's even, you know, I know a lot of people come on Power Hour and, you know, we, we, we listen. But, you know, the first step might be to take yourself off mute and have a, have a quick little conversation. I can see Michelle there having a bit of a smile. <laughs> so, so just taking those little steps of building your confidence to start um, when you are faced with these sort of things, because it's inevitable in business, when you are faced with these sort of conversations, you're able to stand your ground, have your note paper, and go back point after point after point and almost get a cuddle at the end. That's an amazing outcome, Deb, to be able to get that at the end. And you know what? If you if you cowered and said sorry and, you know, it won't happen again and, and, and was meek and mild in that situation, he would have he would have sniffed the, the fear and gone harder, I would imagine, in seeing those sort of situations before. So standing equal to him would have made him realise, oh, she's not going to back down here. Yeah. And I think I think there's a lot to be said in that. So confidence building, I think, is a big part of growing businesses and being able to stand up to bullies, essentially. Oh, this is, and I'm glad you made that point, Sharon, because, um, you know, I don't want anyone to think that this is Debbie in, you know, when she, in the first two years of her business, this yeah. was when I had, I'm guessing I would have had six or eight staff already. So this is well and truly into, I've uh, in business seven years or something or other, uh, made all those mistakes, had learnt a lot and all the coaching that I got from Peter Cook over those years as well to help me gain that confidence. So absolutely, um, I the, this, but it does, what, what what it does demonstrate though is that someone that who wouldn't in at the start of my uh, business wouldn't have said book to a goose mm. Mm. like literally we wouldn't yes okay do you want that yeah all right yelling 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 okay yeah i'll just be mm. i'll be better next time okay mm. I'll just, um, you know, and you just accept people yelling at you, accept people being disrespectful to you and just, 
this is the doormat, you know, it just I'll wipe my feet on you and all this sort of thing. It's like that's the, that's the person that I was. So this, the person that I was describing is like six years later. Um, and what we want to convey, I guess, is that don't wait six years, don't do six years of practice of this, but do, it's okay you're, to stand up and say no, no, that's not okay to when people are treating you disrespectfully, if they're not going to pay you, that's not okay. Um, the way one, another little um, thing that changed my mindset was, because I heard, I've, I've heard bookkeepers say, yes, I, I need to be harder. I need to be tougher. I need to be all of that. And that's actually not helpful because we aren't hard or tough. We're in a, and we don't want to be. We don't want to be like the person that's yelling at us or the person that's treating us disrespectfully. That's not who we are. We're people with integrity and we're kind and we want to help. So it's not actually helpful to, and it's not true. You don't actually need to be hard like them. What you need to do, and this is how what I changed my mindset, was I started to say I'm running my business more professionally. And as a result of that, what the ways I do that is I get paid up front. Um, I, this is the software that I'm using. This is, um, these are my core values. This is how you can speak to my staff. This is how, and that's not me being hard. That's me being professional. And it's based on my core values. So, and if you don't want to be like that with me, then I th that's okay but I'm not going to put up with it. And you need to find another bookkeeper who can better service your needs. So yeah. think of, to get that confidence, if you're Debbie in 2001, when I started my business and lack confidence and there's no way on this earth that you would be able to do something like that, start off by telling, changing your mindset and just using different words that I'm running my business professionally. And this is how I do that based on my core values. Helen, I started, um, I introduced you, I threw you, in you into the hot seat. How are you we going? You fired me up, Debbie, this whole <laughs> conversation. I'm like, oh, my God, there's yes. like 18 minutes left and I'm just going <laughs> to, Karen, Karen, I'm going to apologise. I didn't hear your story because I've got some background going on here that I had to just leave. <laughs> um, mm. I bring this back to that first meeting when I meet a client, like, I always assume they're not going to read my terms and conditions. So I give them a sample of the terms and conditions before because I, at that stage I wouldn't have done a proposal. So I run through it with them and I make it extremely clear you will not disrespect my, me or my staff. So I make it so clear. You will not raise your voice. All those things. If you're having a bad day, stay away from my stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just don't. And it goes back to, and you've all probably heard it, when I've had children, I go out on site and I used to say to myself, this better be worth it because I'm leaving my kids and I'm missing out on that time. So I always had that in my mind. So I've, I've, never, I've never had any confrontation with clients ever since I did have one a long time ago and I said the same thing to him he was having his own personal rant and it wasn't even directed at me it was just in my presence and he was throwing things around and that was just the stop mm. there because you can't all the staff were on edge and I just said to him you know at that time, I probably said the story before, but I just said, this is not why I've come out to work. This is not why I do what I do. And to leave my kids and put up with this, I'm, I'm not going to do that. And I walked out. And it's the only time I've ever let any client in the lurch. Mm. Um, I do remember once I was working in an accountant's office. Um, I had a little space there. And I'd work on his clients, but I worked for the clients directly, only because I didn't have an office. And he said, I'll come and work here. And, you know, in exchange, they'd pick my brains and everything. One day he went off at his two assistants really horribly, like, you know, not, not cursing, but just 
was pushing his weight around and he was angry about something and he just went right off at them. The two assistants, one was his sister-in-law and one was his wife. (laughs) But I I still felt in a professional environment that was no way to speak to staff. I took the family thing out of it because I thought I'm there, I'm not family, and there were other people in this building. I went into his office and I just, and I told him, and I said, you will not speak to them like that in my presence what you do at home or how you treat them when I'm not around fine but I'm not going to come out and listen to that when I'm here to work no one has to listen I said if you want to speak to them that's fine don't do it in my presence (laughs) and the girls actually came up and said oh thank you he's having a moment a day I said well take it outside let's go Mm -hmm. to the coffee shop let's air some steam you know get your steam out but don't do it in front of everyone because it just puts everyone on edge and how can you be productive when you know someone's you know woofing around and banging and whatever and he was banging that day banging doors banging this you know Mm -hmm. so but since then I've never had any kind of confrontation with a client where there's a meeting or anything like that that I know that that's going to be a hard hard to sell kind of thing but Mm -hmm. I have always told um and I might be disadvantaged because it's only one staff member that goes predominantly out on site like you tell your children, you know, your kids come home, they have an issue at school. I tell my kids, talk about it with the teacher. The issue stays in school. It shouldn't, mm-hmm. you know, and this isn't severe bullying. They just had their, you know, something happened. And I've always said the teachers with you need to sort it out with the child, you know, the other student involved. I always tried to stay out of it. So when it comes to staff members on site, Yes, they call, they're concerned about certain things, things are not working the way they want or whichever. So I say to them, have a talk to the director. Pull him up, tell him you need to have a chat about a few things that are not working well or concerning you. And, you know, I'm trying to keep that confrontation in that workplace instead of it coming for me to say, well, I could ring the director and have a talk to them, but I don't want to get involved. And that might Mm. be... I don't know if everyone thinks that's the right or wrong way, but a lot of the times it's an issue that happened in house. I wasn't there. It's you feel like you're over, you know, shadowing your staff. But and my staff weren't spoken to incorrectly. It was more so something's changed in a procedure or you know whichever. But I haven't. I think, had I, I think that what that does, Helen, it actually empowers your staff. Like oh, when you when you say that to your children. You know what you're doing is preparing them for life. You're not always going to be there. You you can't be there all the time. You're not going to be able to rescue them sometimes. They and they need to practice in a safe environment. And practicing those conversations in a safe environment of a classroom is a great way to, for them to learn confidence that they can actually say something that you know that was not okay or something to the teacher and and feel safe there and I think you're doing the same thing with your staff you're empowering them you're giving you're equipping them with the tools so you could even um, I found myself coaching my staff uh, and saying okay well this happened so let's talk about the conversation that you might have with that client because Yeah, you do want to empower them. It's better for them personally and professionally. It's better for you that they're not always running to you. um, It it did happen two days ago. A staff member um, was uh, pulled up for a meeting and it was about, you know, costing and they were concerned with COVID and, you know, he was trying to poach her on the side, you know, I could pay you this much if you come work for me full time, blah, blah, blah. Oh, she yeah. stood her ground and she had that discussion she's been wanting to have for a while with them. And all I knew about it was her driving home and calling me and saying, I did it, I did it. I stood my ground, I said this, I said that, and I feel so mm. good it's out in the air. And, and he was even, you know, she said, oh, he was throwing things back at me, but he had that cheeky smile. And I know this client really well because I worked for him for four years. So I know exactly how mm. he's like a big teddy bear. But, you know, he tries to be firm, but he doesn't quite know how. So he's, he'd never mm. be rude. But he was trying to just get her to come down on price and this. And I've always said to her, you're working for your own dollars. Like I know I pay them and clients think, okay, you know, the company gets the money. But 
I've sort of taught her in a way that you're worth more than that. You're worth way more than what he's already paying now. So don't don't let anyone think you're not worth it. Even if they want to save a dollar, you are far more valuable to me on other clients. So, um, and clients know from that first meeting, I make all that clear about pricing. Don't ask for discounts. Don't ask for this. It's not going to wear things. Mm -hmm. It just won't. So I think you're saying, Debbie, don't be badass. I think I'm a little bit badass <laughs> at the start with that. Clients, um, yeah, I don't have those kind of confrontations, but I do instigate them when we're on the other side of we're not probably getting paperwork or we're not getting things back straight away. So I ring clients and I, I do. I say, we need to sit down. We need to talk. So it's more I have them sort of a little bit agitated because they've been told from the start, if it's not working, we will, we will move on. Simple as that. Mm -hmm not mm -hmm. you know if you're not changing you're not going to change down the track you know and if it's something we're repeatedly yeah. telling you to do or or you know request from you you're not you're not making that effort then we won't bother we'll just walk away we'll find you mm -hmm. another bookkeeper and we'll walk away so I think um yeah I feel that it's that in I think it is it comes from what Sharon said it's that confidence and it's also with each meeting, it might be silly because I'm more of a people person, <laughs> possibly from my hairdressing days. If I have to have that meeting with a client, I'll look at what I'm, how I'm going to dress because I want to mm -hmm. dress in a power way. I want to feel so generally pants, some sort of pants, legs. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know, I look at where I'm going, the, the atmosphere. It could be a factory. It could be an office. So I will dress for that. And also I'll dress and... Make sure I feel really good because if I feel good, I look good, whatever, I'll feel stronger and it's like, no, you won't push me down. You won't get your way. And then I'm driving there and I'm thinking, what do I want from this client? What do I need this client to agree to? What am I trying to achieve? Or I'm not going to leave until I've got this answer before I walk out the door. So I think that's just in your head you just... You know, I think that I think they run their own horn to get you all. You know, um, so yeah. That, I think that comes down to, or it speaks to what we were talking about earlier about being prepared. Um, and I think all you, all everything that you've spoken about is setting yourself up to win. So what is it that you need to do? And Jackie's got her list that, that, of things that she's going to be speaking about preparing yourself before the meeting going through the scripts in your minds um Sharon you've got other tips as well with uh with your experience I've got so many tips but I'd like to put my coaching hat on and ask Michelle if she has any feedback <laughs> have you got any um any any story to show, share Michelle about your tricky conversations um actually I had one on Friday that I had to sort out yesterday. I think it was yesterday. No, day before Tuesday. So um, I actually had the day off on Friday. I had a ladies retreat that we went to. I was having a wonderful day. And then right at the end of the day, I did a stupid thing and checked my emails. <laughs> and there was quite a uh, abrupt email from one of our clients um, accusing us of like not doing the right thing mm. um, in no uncertain terms. Anyway, it was it was out of the blue, but not like I knew these, there was something going down in their offices there, but um, didn't really know the full story. So I, the lady who sent it, I wasn't actually dealing with. She was the CEO, and I was dealing with their finance manager. So I rang him and I said, "What? What's this? Why? What's going on here? Like all these things are just they're wrong. Like what's what she's saying is not right." And he's going, he's going, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to be part of it. Um, why don't you just ring her and find out? Anyway, it put such a damper on my afternoon mm. that I was like, I was very low and down and mm. like just playing it over and over in my head, sitting there going, it's just everything she's saying is just wrong. <laughs> I just don't know what to do. And I thought about replying via email with like, you know, this is wrong, you're wrong, you're saying the wrong thing, yada, yada, yada. But instead, I decided to call her on Tuesday. So I called her on Tuesday morning and I said, all the points you made in there is 100% correct for your organisation, but we didn't actually have anything to do with all those things that you're 
talking about. And I think it would be great for your organisation to take those things on board and do them. Um, in terms of the work that I've done, I've actually done all those things that you've got listed there, but there are staff in your organisation who don't, and I'm happy to help them with that or um, give you any information you might need to help that move along. But, um, you know, you, you basically are, it's not me that you've got a problem with. Anyway, she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, all those things that you've listed there, I've already emailed your finance manager and your HR manager and told them those exact same things. So they'd mm -hmm. organised an external accountant to go in and review the system and then they provided all these feedback that I'd already given them. And mm -hmm. it was and it was just a, it was a decision that I made to not go back angry but instead to go back supportive instead because it, it like it had really uh, rocked me quite a bit mm. on the Friday afternoon and I got I got very low on the Friday afternoon and of course you're playing out your email in your head like you got, you're writing that email like 500 times I'm just going to say this and I'm going to give them this and I'm going to show them all the emails and yada 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 and you're working yourself up into a leather mm. and then I went and had a glass of wine when I got home mm. and I went you know what I'm not going to worry about it today I'm going to worry about it on Tuesday because she sent it to me like quite late on a Friday. So there was no expectation for me to get back to her mm. kind of thing. And really all it did. And over here, we also had a long weekend public holiday. So um, it was just a really nice way for her to ruin my long weekend. So mm. I just decided, no, do you know what? I'm not going to take that on today. I'm going to have my glass of wine. I'm going to sit down with my family and I'm going to enjoy my weekend. I'm going to worry about it on Tuesday. And I decided on Tuesday, I actually did write the reply um, I put it into a Word document, put down all her points, put down all my points about how she was wrong. And then when I rang her, I didn't say any of it, but I was, but I was confident that I hadn't done anything wrong. And I just mm -hmm. said to her, we've already addressed all this stuff. Your finance manager has already outsourced the issues. We've already gone through and done all that. All these things that they're saying here, like, We've already done that. We've already got plans to put those in place. Like, it's great that it's been identified in a formal document because then you can put a plan behind it. I was just, like, positive, and she was like, oh, well, it's just that I wasn't aware of any of this. And you're kind of sitting there going, mm. yeah. you know. Michelle, did you, did you say you emailed, you emailed her or you rang her? I didn't. Okay. No, I rang her in the end. Okay. I wrote did the you? email. I wrote yeah. it all down. Um I put it in a Word document, actually, and I wrote everything down as to why, like, what she had said was not right. So if she wanted a formal written response, I had it. But I basically just went back to her and I said, look, these are great, these are great points about how to use the system, um, just so that you're aware. We'd already discussed all this. Wherever I was in the system, I'm actually doing all that. Um, so I don't, I'm not really sure why he sent it to me so <laughs> at the after, end of the day. After the phone call, do you... Um, the only thing I've found with that is that because the phone call is a one-on-one -on -one, and if there's multiple people involved, and I have one company that there's three directors and three people in accounts and often I'm dealing with everyone and I'm sometimes dealing with customer service and God knows what. So I, if I can't get in there and have a meeting with everyone to, to so what you say, there's witnesses of what, what's being said, like, mm. You've got her on the phone and, and she wasn't aware you've done all this. So if you have to do it over a phone call, which I, I do quite a lot now um, because it's more personal, but then I follow up with an email that I CC everyone involved and I say, you know, as per discussion, I put all the points of what <clears throat> it's like your letter. You're just copying that into the email to clarify this is what you have done. This is what we just discussed. This is what I've recommended so that, Everyone who's not party to that phone call actually knows what's going on and no one can come back behind your back and say, that wasn't the phone call, this is what we said. So, I mean, I don't know if everyone thinks that's ideal, but I think that works mm. for us because we, we try and always have to keep everyone in the loop. Mm. So Yeah, and, that, and there's definitely mm. times when that is the situation. I think the thing is, though, this particular issue was just this lady. Mm. Um, and so um, she just had a be in her bonnet. I think it was similar to Deb's situation. She just needed someone to hear what she said and to acknowledge it kind of thing. 
So it didn't really feel like CCing the whole world in and and doing all that was actually going to make any difference to anything that she was yeah, doing. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We had already um, had notification that our contract was finishing. So um, we were in there to do temp work while uh, until they got a um, financial manager replacement. So we were always we were already heading to the end of the contract anyway. So um, uh, we it it just didn't seem worth it. It seemed more that she just needed to be heard and have someone talk to her about it. Um, but I agree. I sometimes I will make if I've had a phone conversation, then I'll write back with her. This is what we've discussed yada 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 and this is what we're doing and all that sort of stuff I just didn't really think this was that situation because they didn't want us to actually do anything she just wanted to rant at me for yeah, it yeah so I think it I've, wasn't yeah I think that's Got using it. wisdom as well Michelle um hmm. and Helen uh I think the the the, the, the takeaway for me from all of this and we, we're already over the, the top of the hour we could uh we, we, we should do this again, Sharon, because you haven't even shared. You've got all these words of wisdom and that to, to share as well. I think we should do this again sometime soon. Um, but I think the takeaway for me, and I'll, I'll let you um, say uh, your last words as well, Sharon, is the preparation. So, Michelle, you didn't, if you had have responded to that email as a knee-jerk thing, it probably wouldn't have turned out in a way that you would have felt was but you were proud of or appropriate or whatever you've you've just taking take, let's take a breath uh let's just let it all settle and Jackie you've done the same thing by by preparing for this conversation that you're going to have Karen you like that that's the takeaway for me is uh, and and Helen the preparation you do setting expectations right from the start so that, that so that if you something goes wrong, you can go back to a lot of it is about preparation, think carefully and and put things in place, whether it's a script or whether it's um, a, a dot points or whatever it is. Don't respond at the same level and the same energy that the person who is either in the room with you going like that or the email is like that. Um, just just pause think about hang on what's going on in their world why are they like this right now um how am I going to address this and and like you're you're raising yourself above what the way they're behaving really which is and I'll wrap up by saying that's because you're running your business professionally and Sharon your last words of, of wisdom there's a movie called The Perks of a Wallflower and there's a line in that movie <laughs> that I just love that goes, you accept the love you think you deserve. Last year I was coaching a director of a 15 accountant accounting firm in Victoria and he was about 65, just about ready to retire, the most staid accountant you could ever imagine. And my coaching was on this because a lot of their clients weren't ideal clients. And he he absolutely loved that line. And he actually mm. did a training session with his accountants on it after our coaching session. So if you change love to clients, we accept the clients we think we deserve. I reckon in each of the stories from Jackie, Helen, Michelle, Karen and Deb, it's really been... Um, that's that was the line in the sand for all of you Jackie what you're about to do you know you're accepting the clients you think you deserve and you know you deserve better than him mm -hmm. I, I just think you know we've all we've all been brave around these conversations and it's so good to get on with all of your feedback so thank you so much mm, thank you Sharon and thank you everyone for your valuable contribution uh, I hope uh, for those listeners and watchers and what have you that you feel a little bit encouraged, you feel a little bit empowered about what you can do and the clients that you choose to do your best work with. And remember, you can't do your best work with everyone. Um, mm. Think about Sharon's uh, comment as well. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Uh, have a great week and bye for now. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.